This is the Dual Precision VCO from Radical Frequencies, a small company out of Greece run by Nicholas Polyturidis. These units are handmade by Nicholas. As you can see, they're rather old school, through hole construction with single sided printed circuit boards. The nice thing about this over your modern multi layer surface mount technology is that it's easy to modify these modules. I ordered mine with a control voltage for the second VCO, beta, normaled to the input for the first VCO, alpha. I've also done some modification of the linear FM depth, and I'll get into that in a later movie. It does have a few issues. You can see the square wave is well below zero volts. There's a little bit of crosstalk, a little bit of entrainment, but it's been tuned by ear by Nicholas to have a very fat sound, and it is indeed a very interesting oscillator. It has fantastic tracking. It stays in tune over several octaves, and there's some really well thought out normalization. For example, the exponential FM, the linear FM, and the pulse width modulation are all normaled to the other side, to the other oscillator. Taking, for example, the triangle wave for pulse width modulation, and switchable between the sawtooth wave and the sine wave for the frequency modulation. There's also internal sync, and this is the only thing that's not bi directional in the module. The beta side syncs to the alpha side, and it's a special soft sync, not your normal hard sync. And again, we'll look at that in a later movie. Each oscillator has a very wide range, going from LFO duties up to high frequency duties. For example, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my modulation for now, isolate the alpha oscillator. By turning my voltage controlled mix over to that side. I'm using cross faders for this particular sound because when you're mixing together three VCOs, it's very easy to start clipping your internal signals. So I made this patch to take advantage of the mother's internal cross fader between alpha and beta on the radical frequencies precision VCO, then using the normal mix knob to go between the mother's own VCO and the external sound, which is coming from the voltage controlled mix. Open up the filter so it's not in the way, turn the resonance down. Let's go ahead and listen to the tuning range of this particular oscillator. I'll go to middle C on my controller keyboard, and we go from supersonic to very low. And the LED shows you what's happening with the output. And indeed, the square wave output is tied to this LED. That's part of the reason why it's offset in the negative range. Now the advantage of this, in addition to having an LFO around in your system, is that you can use it to pulse with modulate the other side. I'm going to take it down into the low territory here. I'm going to switch over to the other VCO. Start bringing up the pulse with mod. So that's your normal pulse with modulation sound. Nice chorusing. As you heard during the little demo I just did, you can go up to frequency modulation on the pulse width. I'll take the pulse width out, 
And let's take a look at these individual waveforms. To do that, I'm going to take my output patch out of the mother and instead run it right to these individual waveforms. So let's go ahead and look at it after you've seen the waveform on the data. Take the output there. I'm going to turn off the trace for alpha just so it doesn't confuse things. There we go. I'll go down to a lower note so it's easier to see in the spectrograph. Maybe even an octave lower than that. That's what the pure square wave sounds looks like. Now normally a square wave would have just odd harmonics, but as soon as the symmetry gets just a little bit off, these even harmonics will appear. You'll see that with a lot of oscillators. And you'll see the mix change as I change the pulse width setting. It goes from close to 50% duty cycle there into a more narrow pulse. And you see the even harmonics get stronger and we have a change in sound. The pulse width does not go to 100%, where it narrows out the notch to where you hear nothing. Again, Nicholas has tuned this to his ear and the range he likes. Let's move over to the sawtooth wave, which is a rising ramp. This has the look of the classic sawtooth wave, where every harmonic is present, with a smooth fall off as you get into the higher frequencies. Maybe a slight emphasis on the higher frequencies is a very big, fat sawtooth. I mean, listen to that bass. Oh, that's just amazing. And there we're getting below audibility, of course. So that's a very powerful waveform. This is a sawtooth core oscillator, which means sawtooth is the main waveform being created during the oscillations of this device. I'll go over to the triangle wave, which is derived from the sawtooth wave. I'm going to go ahead and sync over to the square wave so things don't drift on the data display anymore. And if you look closely, you'll see just this tiny little glitch appearing occasionally in the bottom of the triangle. Again, that's a very common feature of sawtooth core oscillators trying to create a triangle by inverting the waveform partway through the cycle. What you're seeing there is the turnaround point that, rather than reverse the ramp, is having to invert the waveform. Harmonically, it has the typical odd harmonic spacing, much cleaner than the square wave in that regard, and pretty much perfect for a triangle wave. Now, two metal are muted when you pitch it down. But very nice for those high pitches. Finally, there's the sine wave. It is derived from the triangle wave. And it is not perfectly symmetrical. You can see the bottom is slightly more pinched than the top. And also, there's a lot more harmonics present than just the fundamental. That's not just a calibration issue with the beta oscillator. If I patch over to the alpha oscillator, just tune way lower, let's turn it up two octaves. You'll see it has a very similar harmonic spectra. Again, Nicholas has tuned this to ear to create the sounds he wants. So the sine wave is not pure, it has a little bit more harmonic content to work with, but it's still different enough from the triangle, which has obviously more high frequencies present. I'll go back to the output of beta, turn the other oscillator back on, at least on the display. There we go. Get them back in tune. Maybe go ahead and look at the square wave from beta again. And these fine tune controls have a four semitone range up and down. Go back to the normal output of the Mother 32 and listen to both of these oscillators together. There's a nice beating in between them. You see some little bit of grabbing as the square wave lines up with the sawtooth wave, but not enough to be a problem most of the time. We'll talk about entrainment more later. If you do want the oscillators to sync together, there is a soft sync switch where beta will synchronize to the alpha side. Again, it's not a hard sync where it's always on the falling edge of the sawtooth. It's a soft sync where it latches onto individual harmonics. Now the sync switch is a little bit backwards from what I'm used to. I'm used to the American light switch idea where an up switch means on and a down switch means off. But if you've traveled abroad, you know that light switches are all the opposite in many other countries. What I remember here is moving the switch down to sync turns on that feature. So let's go ahead and go back to just the beta oscillator, turn on the Moog. So we hear it all the time. Sync the two oscillators together. See that they've locked together here. And as I tune through alpha's frequencies, we hear beta sound change.
again, we'll play with sync more in a separate movie, but I at least want to give you a feel for the overall features of the Dual Precision VCO. In the next two movies, let's explore these frequency modulation sections. In the next movie, I'm going to listen to just a static mix of a fixed amount of frequency modulation, and then in the movie after that, we're going to go outside of this module and use an extra VCA to dynamically change the FM depth.